So, welcome everybody. <coughs> we have been hearing uh, each other on online. Now it is an opportunity to meet face to face and share our understanding, <coughs> our feeling with each other. This uh, course, uh, EHB 3, is basically, you know, trying to look, dive deeper into our own self and into the existence. Uh, in EHB 2, we have broadly looked into what a human being is, what is his purpose in this existence. We have also tried to understand the nature, the existence and the role of human being in this nature, in this existence. We have also talked about the family, the society, you know, and what is the basic harmony underlying the family, the society and how we can ensure living in that harmony. In these sessions, we will try to look deeper into our own self as a human being and also try to look at the nature and the existence in a much more detail you know, and depth than what we have been doing otherwise. <coughs> so this, the title says Understanding Human Being, Nature and Existence Comprehensively. So if you look at the total course and the overview of it, the objective is to help the students have the clarity about human aspirations, goal, activities and purpose of life. So these are some of the very important questions for us, right? We need to find out what we are as human beings, what are our aspirations, our goals, what are our activities, right? And what is the purpose of our life ultimately? And in order to do this, we also need to understand the nature, the existence in which we are embedded and the role that we have to play in this nature, in this existence. And on the basis of this, we can understand what we have to do as a human being, what is going to be the human conduct. And if we live with that human conduct, how this human family would look like, the human society would look like, and ultimately how the human tradition would look like. So all these issues we are going to explore into. Number one, explore into our own self as human being. Explore into the nature, and ultimately the existence. Then trying to find out what is our role as a human being in this nature, in this existence. Thereby trying to understand the human conduct. And on the basis of understanding of this human conduct, what would be the nature of the human family, the human society and ultimately the human tradition. So all these issues we are going to explore in this, in this workshop. <coughs> rather, we will initiate the process of exploring into all this, rather than, you know, completing the process of exploration. The methodology you are all aware of, you know, it is same as the methodology that we have adopted in EHB 2 and all the other EHB courses. It is explorational. Each one of us can explore into the reality on our own right. And in that sense, it is universally adoptable. So it is not that this methodology belongs to a particular you know, group of people, a particular sect or particular area. Every one of us can explore and find out what is right and what is not right on our own right. 
it involves a systematic and rational study of the human being vis a vis the rest of existence. <coughs> it is free from any dogma or set of do's and don'ts related to values. So, we are not expecting any one of you to agree or disagree right, to what is being said here regarding the basic realities and about regarding the values. We want you to explore and find out for yourself. Right? So, it is not in terms of you know having a particular belief system or not having a particular belief system. It is not in terms of do's and don'ts. Right? <coughs> it is a process of self-investigation and self-exploration and not of giving sermons. So, it is not that you know, I know the truth and therefore, I am telling you what is the truth and what is expected of you to take it as a truth and work with it. That is not the idea. Whatever is found as truth or reality is stated as a proposal and the students are facilitated and encouraged to verify it in their own right. And when you go about verifying it on the, your own right, it is done based on their natural acceptance and subsequent experiential validation. So, both at the level of natural acceptance, you can verify whether it is right for you or not right for you. And also at the level of experiential validation, when you live with this uh, proposal, does it result into mutual happiness? Does it result, result into mutual prosperity? If it does, then it is right. If it does not do so, then it is not right. So, based on your own natural acceptance and based on your experiential validation, each one of us can verify whether the given proposal is right for me or not right for me. This process of self-exploration takes the form of a dialogue between the teacher and the students to begin with and that is what we will do. You will see throughout the session, we will conduct the whole uh, session in the form of a dialogue between us and you to begin with. But whatever we are, the question that we are asking to you, okay, the same dialogue will start within you yourself and that you must have experienced, right, going through UHB 1 and UHB 2. That our idea to initiating this dialogue is to help you have this dialogue within your own self. So, the questions which we are asking to you, you will start asking the same questions to yourself, right? And if that dialogue starts within you, then our purpose is served, right? So, to begin with, there will be a dialogue between the teacher and the student and then to continue within the student leading to continuous self-evolution. So, this dialogue within you, this exploration within you will lead to the self-development, right? What Umeshji was asking in the morning, in the first session, that this process of evolution, this process of self-development is something which is being initiated through these workshops, right? But once it starts, then it goes on, right? You have a long way to go, each one of us have a long way to go. But the process is initiated and once it is initiated, it goes on, right? And one of the uh, kind of uh, regular help that you get is through the morning session, which uh, Umeshji was uh, trying to make sure that you are attending that morning session. Because uh, this helps you in this process of uh, self-exploration in continuity. So, every day it reminds you in the morning you know, that you have to work with it, okay. And our experience has been that those who have been uh, connected with this morning session, their exploration has been quite, uh, you know, effective, you know, and it is really making a significant change in their life, their individual life as well as their family life and their workplace. This self-exploration also enables them to set critically evaluate their preconditionings and present beliefs. This you all know, right? Okay. That we are all, you know, having so many preconditionings, so many, you know, beliefs, what we call as sanskar, you know. So, we have accumulated so many sanskar over this lifetime and maybe many other, you know, lifetime. 
and we operate with those sanskar without really knowing what they are and whether they are right or they are not right okay so we need to dwell into them you know and find out what those sanskars are and whether they are right or they are not right whether they are leading to the feelings which makes us happy or unhappy okay whether they are natural or unnatural all those things you know we can explore and find out for ourselves <coughs> uh this you all are acquainted with so i will not much uh, detail it out this process of self exploration has two parts part 1 is verifying on the basis of your natural acceptance and part 2 is verifying on the basis of your experiential validation and this experiential validation has two part living according to it that is behavior with human being leading to mutual happiness and work with rest of nature leading to mutual prosperity <clears throat> and if any exploration or any test of this proposal passes through this and if there is yes on both sides then it leads to right understanding you are all aware of this right i don't have to go to the detail. anybody who is not very uh, clear about this particular thing about this process of exploration self exploration and this is something you know to begin with it seems very simple and straight forward but as you go on exploring you will find you know it has layers and layers of depth okay this natural acceptance to begin with you feel that yes it is something which is so easily accessible to each one of us right and you start working with it and it makes so much of difference but after some you know stage you start getting confused whether it is natural acceptance or it is another set of my beliefs you know my sanskar okay so things are becoming now finer and you should continue you know working on it similarly this issue of mutual happiness mutual prosperity all these are very uh, kind of slowly it will get very refined as you go on you know working on it <coughs> so this is the process through which we are trying to verify things for our own self on our own right of course which process is naturally acceptable to you a process of self exploration self verification on your own right leading to understanding in yourself or a process of do's and don'ts in which you assume what is said without verification this is clear to you you know i think by now i am not asking this question to you okay presuming that you already have the answer to it so with this if you look at the whole course it has five modules in module 1 we have introduction basic human aspiration its fulfillment through all encompassing resolution this is module 1 in module 2 right understanding you know trying to see what right understanding is okay this process of knowing and in that context who is the knower what is the known and what is the process of knowing these three things are discussed in more detail module 3 we are trying to understand the human being module 4 understanding nature and existence and module 5 understanding human conduct the all encompassing resolution and holistic way of living so this is what we are going to explore in terms of the content module 1 will look into the basic human aspiration and their fulfillment through right understanding and resolution resolution may be a new word for you we'll explain what it is 
right understanding regulation as the activities of the self self being central to human existence all encompassing regulation for a human being its details and solutions of problems in the light of regulation interestingly the shift that you will find in ehb 3 is that in ehb 2 we have been trying to draw your attention to the fact that you are not just the body right but you are the coexistence of self and the body right this is what we were trying to do in ehb 3 we will try to draw your attention to the fact that you are the self not the body you are using the body as an instrument right like umesh ji was asking who is getting happy and happy self or the body self who wants to understand self who gets confused right so all this is self so you are the self and you are using your body as an instrument right so you will see all the discussions in ehb 3 will be focused around this realization that i am the self i am the one who wants to get happy the self wants to get happy right the self is happy with right understanding and right feeling without right understanding and right feeling self is not happy right and in all this process the self is using the body as an instrument okay so if you look at all these topics you know you would realize that they are now all focused to the self okay <coughs> so when you are saying right understanding and regulation as the activities of the self self being central to human existence all encompassing regulation for a human being its details and solution of the problem in the light of regulation and this regulation or confusion is going to be in the self right who feels resolved self who feels confused self yes so all this relates to the self basically in module 2 the domain of right understanding starts from understanding the human being the knower the experiencer and the doer and extends up to understanding the nature and existence so you begin with knowing your own self the human being and then trying to know the family the society the nature and ultimately the existence its inter- interconnectedness and coexistence and finally understanding the role of human being in existence that is human conduct in module 3 we are trying to understand the human being in more detail so understanding the human being comprehensively is the first step and the core theme of this course human being as coexistence of self and body the activities and potentialities of the self basis for harmony contradiction in the self so there we will try to now explore deeper into the self you know what is the meaning of harmony in the self what is the meaning of contradictions in the self the happiness in the self the unhappiness in the self what are the activities of this self you know how we can look into them and find out you know what they are and what you know is it leading to a state of harmony or leading to a state of contradiction and unhappiness module 4 is understanding nature and existence so here we are trying to look into the nature and existence a comprehensive understanding knowledge about the existence nature being included nature is being included in the existence the need and process of inner evolution through self exploration self awareness and self evolution the human being it is an integral part of this existence you know in the, in the self this process of inner evolution particularly awakening to awakening to the activities of real self 
these are the three activities of the self which we have to awaken our self to the activity of realization understanding and contemplation realization of coexistence understanding of harmony in nature and contemplation of participation of human being in this harmony this order leading to comprehensive knowledge about the existence so these three activities of the self which we have not been quite familiar with we will talk about them and detail them out one is the realization activity of realization another is activity of understanding and third is activity of contemplation the activity of realization has to do with understanding the coexistence right understanding has to do with to be able to see the harmony in the nature and contemplation has to do with you know to be able to see the relationship right so this realization understanding and contemplation are the activities of the self which we have to look into in much more detail than we have done till now finally this module 5 understanding human conduct different aspects of all encompassing regulation like understanding wisdom science etc holistic way of living for human being with all encompassing regulation covering all four dimensions of human endeavor that is realization thought behavior and work you are familiar with these terms like understanding you know, realization thought behavior and work but we'll look into them in more detail leading to harmony at all levels from self to nature and entire existence so this is the coverage of you know this course <coughs> this is a board which are covered and you should keep them in mind because this is what is the outcome i would say you know of this whole course number 1 i should be able to see understand what is the basic aspiration and see that it is continuity of happiness right interesting usb 2 says the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity right now we are saying continuity of happiness is the basic aspiration and this has prosperity is an integral part of this happiness so it is included in this need for continuity of happiness continuity of happiness through right understanding right feeling and right thought so if i want continuity of happiness what really matters is the right understanding right feeling and right thought we will be able to understand the meaning of all encompassing resolution when do i say that i am resolved right that clarity will have right understanding as knowing of self existence and role of self in entire existence so ultimately the meaning of right understanding would mean i understand myself i understand the nature the existence and i understand my role in this existence self being central to human existence as seer doer and enjoyer so this is what i was just saying that i am basically the self using my body as a as an instrument as and when i require so it is the self who is central to human existence it is the self who is the seer doer and enjoyer all these things will detail you know discuss in detail as we go along different dimensions of a unit if you try to understand a reality and particularly when you try to understand a unit there are different aspects of it right different dimensions of it like you know the uh, shape the size the properties you know the natural characteristics all those things you know the innateness all those things we will look into the complete set of activities in the self that is b1 and b2 with partial clarity of activities of b1 this b2 and b1 you are familiar i know i think the lower part of the activities of the self is called b1 the upper part is called b1 
called B2, the lower part is B2 and the upper part is B1. We will look into the details of this when we go on. With partial clarity about the activities of B1. So, in EHB2, we have explored into some aspects of this B2, you know, what we are calling as imagination, as desire, thought, expectations, you know. Those things we have tried to explore into. In ESV 3, we will further try to explore into the realization, understanding and contemplation, which are also the activities of the self, the higher activities of the self, come under this block B1. Different attributes of four orders with the ability to distinguish the units of four orders. This we have already talked about in ESV 2, but now we will be able to see them you know, with more uh, kind of clarity. The meaning of submergence in space and realization of submergence. We will look into this also in more detail. In ESB2, we have uh, introduced this uh, fact that if you look at the existence, it is not just the units, not just the activities, but the units submerged in space. So, if I really want to understand the nature, the existence, I have to understand the units as well as I have to understand the space. And put together, I have to understand the submergence of units in space. Submergence of activity in no activity. That we will look into now in more detail. Different steps of resolution. So, if I am resolved, what does it mean? What are the different steps of it? Resolution of various doubts <coughs> and queries related to self, submergence and proposals from the traditions. If you look at the tradition, particularly in India, as uh, Napoleon Ji was telling in, you know, in the morning session, we already have a long tradition where we have tried to explore into all these things, you know, and so many things have been said about it. Right? In the light of all this exploration, we will be able to look into them and understand them better, you know, what they really meant, okay. <coughs> So, like he was saying, you know, this 99.999 of this existence is not units, not activities, right? It is space, you know, and it is important and we need to understand that. But we generally don't even take note of it, right? So, all those things we will try, you know, we can understand in the light of all this exploration. So, these proposals from the tradition, you know, we can now look into. <coughs> Their role in the existence in the current system programmed to live accordingly. So, all this understanding will have a definite role in the existence in the current system and the program to live accordingly. So, these details we will look into. But these are the main uh, points which we want to explore through. Yes, if there are any questions, uh, we can take up. It, it should... Uh, if you raise your hands, I will identify who is yeah, speaking yeah. because it, voice comes from here, no? Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. Sir, I am Venkatesh, I am from SRM. So, in UHV3, you are introducing us something uh, related to resolution. So, resolution should be uh, towards uh, nurturing the self or all entities that is taking part in? Basically, the resolution would mean what is my role in this existence? What I have to do as a human being in this nature, in this existence? So, in that sense, it will include my understanding about myself, my understanding about this whole nature, this existence and this put together, okay, what I have to do in this nature, in this existence. So, if I have the clarity about all these three things, then I will be resolved within. Right? So, resolution means I know what is my role in this existence. Confusion means, I do not know what is my role in this existence. I do not know what I have to do, right? Yeah. Excuse me. 
Yes. Uh, in point number six, it is talking about different dimensions of a unit. Is it referring to the definite conduct part of material units and con conscious units or something different? It is referring to the properties of an unit, for example, the shape, the size of an unit, all those details, the natural characteristics, the uh, innateness and ultimately the coexistence. So these are the five dimensions of an unit. Generally, if you look at uh, 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 the, way the way the science look at things today, it is either dealing with the shape, the size and things like that or it is dealing with the properties. It is not generally looking into the natural characteristics the innateness and the coexistence. So you already have some idea about it, you know, in EHB 2. <coughs> but here we will look into them in more detail. Maya. Maya, Namaste Maya. Maya, you have told that... To yeah. Okay. Sorry, Maya. Uh, Maya, you have told that prosperity is the integral part of happiness. Can you uh, put some light on that, Baya? Yeah, if you want to ensure continuity of happiness, I have to understand and live in harmony at all levels of my being. And one of the levels of my being is that I am able to see that this body is an instrument, you know, for me. And therefore, I have to take care of this body. This is number one. Number two, I have to see that this nature, I am in harmony with this nature and I am related to the rest of nature in a mutually fulfilling manner. So if I see both these things and if I relate to the nature in a mutually fulfilling manner, then I am, I am able to produce more than what is required as a physical facility to take care of my body. Right. So, in order to ensure continuity of happiness, I have to understand the harmony at all levels of my being and fulfill that harmony. If I do that, then one part is ensuring my harmony with the body. Another part is ensuring my harmony with the rest of nature. These two together, if I look at my need to be in harmony with the body, I can identify my need of physical facility. And if I am in harmony with the rest of nature, I am able to produce more than what is required as physical facility. Right? And these two together will lead to prosperity. But this is an integral part of my need to be in harmony with the entire nature at all levels of my being. Which is the need for happiness. So need for continuous happiness will necessarily include you know, ensuring prosperity. Sir. We'll we, talk about this in more detail. Yeah. Sir, even uh, in this UHP3, we are saying that we will have only partial clarity of the activities of P1. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, what we are doing is we are initiating the process. Each one of us has to explore for himself and go deeper and deeper. Right. So we are initiating the process, we are not completing the process. You have to complete the process. Each one of us has to complete the process for himself or herself. Yeah. That is what we are saying. Very purposefully. Maya. The, look into all aspects of my being, my living. So my participation in the entire nature, entire existence, I should be able to understand. In that sense, it is all-encompassing resolution. But for certain cases, we cannot get a resolution at all, no? Like? Like we need to accept as such, but certain cases we cannot accept people as such. The motivation is to deal with all the people, interact with all the people, enjoy with all the people, create a happiness for ourselves, 
and create a happiness for the others that is the ultimate goal to live in the world but there are certain cases where we cannot get a resolution let it be in family or workplace in that case how to find a <coughs> see i mean if i ask myself given any human being right should i be with a feeling of respect or disrespect respect so i can resolve this whether the other person will respond to it in the same manner or not right that will depend upon whether he has this resolution or not if he is resolved then he will respond right if he is not resolved he may respond he may react but as far as i am concerned i am resolved so if i have to interact with you i am resolved about this fact that i have to interact with you with a feeling of respect and not with a feeling of disrespect i don't have a doubt i am not confused about it is that possible it is very much possible it is god of who he is he or she is right so that resolution is possible with right understanding i can develop that resolution the problem today is we are trying to manage things not understand things and managing things without understanding is very difficult bhaiya as i was reading this quotation you know yesterday when we came here it says management is doing things right and leadership is doing right things nothing about understanding right things you know okay <laughs> <laughs> if you don't understand what is right how can you do right things in a right manner so we are talking about management we are talking about leadership but we are not talking about understanding it you know so if you understand what is right then you can make right decisions Eh? Yeah. Yeah, right is acceptable to us. For example, I have an opponent along with me. Like uh, that person is telling honest, but I am not telling honest. I mean it in the opposite way. I am not telling honest. So he expects. yeah he or she expects a honest decision from me but i argue that what i say is only correct so in that case how will i bring a resolution like imagine like i am dishonest but the opponent party is uh, really honest so in that case <coughs> there uh, i'm i'm talking about that case this happens in most of the situations for most of the human beings no no i'm not saying that there are no problems right there are problems all around okay no But like to ignore is it possible for me to get resolved okay right if not to ignore them or no i'm not saying ignore it? them i'm yeah. saying what is going to be my behavior okay i took this example this dishonest man right <coughs> how do i behave with him with respect or disrespect what should be my feeling the final feeling should be relationship with anyone yes but uh, how to bring him <laughs> yeah. in that situation now, or he now or this she is a, yeah. this is a matter of working out the details okay i'll work out the detail if there is a man 
who is not responding to my feeling of respect and reacting to it then i can see that i cannot you know make plan you know program with him i will have to make a program for him not with him mm. right so i will work out how to implement but as far as i am concerned i am resolved within that i have to be with a feeling of respect for him there is no confusion in that so depending on how this i mean what is the status of this other person i will work out the details giving ready made solutions but we are giving about the basic underlying harmony and the feelings associated with those harmony okay if i can take care of that the details i can work out with every individual separately bhaiya so the fifth point is saying the self the last word is enjoy raise hand i am not even sorry sorry bhaiya yes so the fifth fifth point is saying the last word is enjoy so even if the current state we are enjoy so how will it be different from like we are still managing and not managing but we are enjoying so how is it different when it comes to the self being central to the human existence and we still being enjoy i mean the meaning of it is that seer means i am the one who see things right doer means i am the one who decides what to do what not to do right and enjoyer means i am the one who is bearing the consequences i am the one who is bearing the consequence for example if i have a feeling of opposition with anyone i am unhappy right within who is unhappy self or body self in that sense i am using this word enjoy you know so i am the one who is trying to see the relationship or opposition with the other right i am the one who is deciding for a feeling of opposition or feeling of relationship and i am the one who is bearing the consequences of it happiness or unhappiness the body is okay body is not troubled by it you are troubled by it the self is troubled by it isn't it i keep taking this example no? very common example suppose you are you know have a feeling of opposition with someone and you are thinking of taking revenge okay and two hours you thought about it and after two hours you dropped the idea right outside nothing happened okay inside what happened <laughs> this two hours you were happy or unhappy unhappy who was unhappy self or body self the other person does not even know that you have made so much of effort for him you know <laughs> right <laughs> but for these two hours you were the seer you were the doer you were the enjoyer right <laughs> so can you see that bhai one more quoting this example you know in one of my friend he came with his son he did his uh, btech from iit rurki so he wanted you know me to meet his son so they came and then he introduced you know him to me and then we were talking about all this some of these things and this boy very arrogantly he said look uncle i must tell you that when i get a good breakfast i feel happy and i look for a better lunch and when i get a better lunch i feel happy and i don't want to compromise with it you know that's the kind of arrogance we have today you know so i said see i don't want to snatch away your happiness in the breakfast and the lunch my concern is that in between breakfast and lunch you know let's say there are 3 hours right this 3 hours you are happy or unhappy 
You understand, right? <laughs> and I gave him this example that if three hours you are doing this, take, thinking of taking revenge, what happens to you? He said, unhappiness. He said, my concern is that these three hours in between you should be happy. So I am not taking away your happiness at the time of breakfast and happiness at the time of lunch. lunch. Right? But all these three hours, who is basically getting the suffering? Body or self? Self. So if you are not bothered about the self, you keep suffering. Today what is happening? We are bothered about the body, we are bothered about the physical facility, right? We are bothered about the money, we are not bothered about ourselves. Who is central to the human existence? Yeah, so self is central to human existence and we are not talking about it, we are not taking care of it. Isn't it? Bhaiya, I seek one more clarity. Yeah. So you said the pro the eleven point says uh, last after comma proposal from tradition, but the tradition uh, is like with comes with a lot of preconditioning assumption. So why resolution we are seeking from the and uh, seeking resolution and proposal from tradition? This clarity I didn't get it. Various doubts and queries related to proposals from tradition. See, so many things are said, you know, in the tradition. Like, let's take one simple example. We have said that, you know, human beings cannot decide everything. Right? You cannot decide everything. So many things are decided by the nature, by the existence, or by the niyati, you know. All these things are said. What does it mean? If you are not deciding, how is it decided? So if we understand the harmony in nature, in existence, and we can see that we are and unit in this existence, in this nature, embedded in it, then there are certain basic rules of this existence, this nature, right? Under which things are happening. And I as a human being is an integral part of it. So I am operating under those basic rules and regulations. So things are happening under those basic rules, right? Of existence. So I am not deciding everything. Right. Okay. Things are happening under certain basic harmony, under certain basic rules. If I understand them, I can understand that I am not deciding everything. At the same time, I can also see that I have very significant role to play. Certain things I can decide. Whether I have to have this feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition at this moment, who is going to decide it? I am going to decide it. But there is a super rule. The super rule is, if I have a feeling of relationship, I feel happy. If I have a feeling of opposition, I feel unhappy. This rule I have not made. Right? This is rule is there in existence and I am embedded in that existence. Therefore, I am working with that rule. I cannot walk out of the rule. Isn't it? Uh -huh. Sir, by a B1 is higher activities of the self. Okay, when we are realizing within ourselves how it can be a partial clarity. When we are realizing, we have realized within ourself. In that case, how it will give partial clarity? We are realizing, then it is expressed outside. 
how it can be partial clarity that is the doubt we will see we will see when we look into this activities under b1 we will see whether we have the complete clarity of it or partial you know we will introduce those activities to you you will start looking into yourself you will get a feel of what these activities are then you can decide whether you have a complete clarity of it or just an idea about it see for example you are thinking you know some thought some you know sir thinking is going on sir yeah. are you aware of your thought all the time sometime you are aware sometime you are not right are you able to make sure that the feeling that you have this moment is always the right feeling no but now at least you are being aware of it right you are trying to explore into it trying to verify it in that sense we are saying partial so yeah. uh, what determines this life span huh? what are a few units for example human beings uh, live only for some years some other trees what determines the life span that is a question still uh, a question isn't it sir yeah we'll respond to it when we are talking about these four orders you know and about their nature yes in real life always up and downs in case of if i am happy in my mind is free in case of unhappy in life always up and downs in case of failures my mind unable to take the point uh, clearly it's a, for example train time is 10:30 i am always correct 9:30 i am leaving the correct direction but traffic jam i miss the train i can say i am in correct direction i am in correct time but in real life i miss the train in this situation i blame the others i am correct in the time in myself correct how to overcome this situation this is a very interesting question you know uh, in fact all through this has been the question and the answer which has been given is very interesting the answer which is given in all whole of the tradition if you see is that i have to understand what is changing and what is not changing right what is changing will have ups and downs what is not changing it will not have ups and downs because it is not changing anyway right nitya anitya vivek you heard this word yes. nitya is one which is not changing with time anitya is one which is changing with time and the capacity to discriminate you know between what is changing with time and what is not changing with time is called vivek the discrimination you know the wisdom that is the meaning of wisdom i should be able to understand what is changing with time and what is not changing with time and the interesting thing is that now if you relate to yourself this issue of continuity of happiness essentially relates to that if you want continuity of happiness in the self then the basis of that happiness can only be something which is not changing with time if your happiness is based on something which is changing with time then you cannot have continuity of happiness right yes so all that we have to understand when we explore into all this we will be able to see what is changing with time and what is not changing with time and if you can understand what is not changing with time then in that there is no ups and downs there is no ups and down there 
problem is that we want to derive continuity of happiness from things which are changing with time and because they are changing with time they will change with time and therefore your happiness will be in crisis right yes yeah you will see those details you know by your changing with time with units with persons you know conditions by your um, self has right feeling self has right understanding but this self uh, does not maintain this right feeling and right thought over a period of time it gets biased due to various reasons not only if, uh, for the self from person to person the self changes this right feeling changes uh, based on some bi- bias even though it has right understanding it changes with time we will see you know i mean what you are saying is uh, one has the right understanding and still he can he can have wrong feeling that means that he does not have right understanding i would say i mean it is like a sine wave sometimes up sometimes down right understanding does not have a sine wave okay <laughs> so <laughs> thank you bhaiya mai mai here uh, but i will keep your question open you know yes. when we are discussing the details i will respond to it sure bhaiya when thank we you. talk about right understanding in more detail then i will ask you whether this right understanding will have fluctuations or it will be definite yes bhaiya right bhaiya here Uh, sometimes i don't feel happy i don't feel unhappy also so in which state i am <laughs> then which state i am he is asking about the current state of existence next time you are in <laughs> next time you are in that state ask it you know this question to yourself <laughs> what is the answer <laughs> sir we have got a new formula sir yes happiness What? plus unhappiness divided by 2 <laughs> we will see you know whether there is neutrality in this world it is said either you are part of the problem or part of the solution there is no neutrality right but we will see whether there is there any such case possible i will not say yes or no but you know i'll help you to explore and see yeah things we will you know discuss in detail i have just given you an idea about what we are going to talk about you know theek hai rajesh ji we can move to the next session things we will you know discuss in detail i have just given you an idea about what we are going to talk about you know theek hai rajesh ji we can move to the next session if you are not able to listen you can't even say no right <laughs> lecture here we are asking two things where we are and what we aim at so self evalu- evaluation where we are and where we want to reach that is self evolution you know what kind of evolution that we want to make where do we want to reach okay <coughs> so the background is we exist as human being we want to live a fulfilling life we have some desires and we have some programs for fulfillment this is fine very simple statement 
it is necessary for us to understand our basic aspiration and program for its fulfillment correctly and comprehensively only then we can ensure the fulfillment this is also very simple statement this is what we have been trying to do in ehb2 we want to study it further study it in further depth in this course ehb3 okay the goal of this course can be viewed as follows so in this course number 1 we want to explore the human reality its being the basic aspiration its fulfillment particularly the self in more depth the outcome of this exploration will be self is central to human existence right to explore deeper into nature and existence as coexistence the outcome will be coexistence is central to existence everything that we see in nature and existence is the natural expression and unfolding of this coexistence right this is the second thing i'm just placing these things you know we'll look into this in detail right so one important conclusion we want to draw is that self is central to human existence the other important conclusion we want to reach at is that the coexistence is central to existence and everything that we see in nature is an expression of this coexistence third is to understand the role of human being in further detail in the light of the above two one and two that is to understand the coexistence to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and to live in coexistence in mutual relationship with human being and the rest of nature so this is what is my role in the existence so i have only written down the outcomes right the outcome of the first exploration is that human being sent self is central to human being outcome of the second investigation is that coexistence is central to existence and everything that we see in nature is expression of this coexistence and outcome of this third one is that the role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and ultimately to live in coexistence in mutual relationship with human being and the rest of nature this is broadly the outcome of the whole exploration that we are going to do in uhv3 Okay. our purpose and program depends on assumption or understanding about the existence about the nature about our own self in h2 we have seen that knowingly or unknowingly we have assumed some purpose in life and we have some program for the fulfillment of the assumed purpose so we have already assumed certain things right about ourselves about the nature about the existence about our role in the existence and so on this setting up of the purpose and program depends upon our assumption about number 1 human being and number 2 existence so let us understand this very important thing that our role in this existence or nature we are identifying on the basis of our assumption about our own self about the human being and our assumption about the nature about the existence do you understand this what is being said <coughs> let me take an example to exemplify this if you are made to believe that there is a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest this is what we teach you know in the name of science 
<coughs> that means we are telling the children that nature is by way of opposition by way of struggle right we are also telling them that we as human being have to struggle through this contradiction this you know oppositions and only we will be successful if we fight through we struggle through okay so we have some assumption about the existence we have some assumption about human being and on the basis of these two we conclude about what is our purpose and what is our program for the fulfillment of that purpose for example you on the basis of this set of assumption you will conclude that i have to succeed right succeed in this struggle and in order to succeed i have to compete with the other i have to oppose with the other that is my program right do you understand this yeah so now every child in the class wants to succeed by way of competing with the other so every child wants to come first in the class and if there is a class of 60 how many people can come first one right now this child who is trying to come first look at this 59 other students as their relation you know or as their opposition opposition right now with this feeling of opposition will it lead, will it lead to a state of happiness unhappiness unhappiness so by telling this to the child that the nature is by way of struggle for survival and the survival of the fittest we are setting some set of belief in them set up set up assumption him in them which is making them unhappy every moment and we don't know that we are doing this isn't it when i am teaching this to the kids as a teacher do i know this that i am making his life unhappy no but we are doing it this is what is happening you know we collect this kind of assumption from the society you know from the education from friends you know all around isn't it we had some assumptions about this to this to before usb2 and now these assumptions have been modified through the process of self exploration that we went through in the usb2 course what do you think your assumption about human being and about the existence or nature was it same before you did usb2 and after you do, did usb2 it has changed and it is changing slowly right as you go on exploring about yourself about the nature it is slowly changing right yes let's look at some details of this shift in our assumption and understanding assumption before usb2 human being is equal to what body after usb2 human being is coexistence of self and body can you see this change if not completely partially at least right yeah i would not say completely because it takes time for you to really you know undo all your assumptions otherwise no? it might <laughs> it might still be an assumption rather than an understanding so we yeah. have to differentiate between uh the another assumption a previous assumption in addition to that we have a new assumption and both of them are playing 
Yes. So there was one assumption that human being is equal to body. Now there is another assumption that human being is equal to coexistence of self and body. You might have assumed it without understanding. So you have to keep verifying it, whether it is an understanding or another set of assumption. Regarding the existence, before VHB2, we thought that existence is equal to material. Now we are trying to investigate into this, that existence is not just the material, but units submerged in space and the units are of two types, the material unit and the consciousness unit. <coughs> And when we are investigating into the units, particularly you can investigate yourself in terms of the self and body. You know, the self is an unit of consciousness, body is an unit of material. I as human being is coexistence of the self and the body, therefore the coexistence of consciousness and the material. This all of us are investigating, right? Exploring. So now for you this Existence is not just the material, which we thought before. Can I assume that? Does any of you still think that human existence is just the material? How many of you think like that? <laughs> With this, if you look at the purpose, the purpose of human being is happiness, right? Through, before USB 2, happiness through sensation and feeling from the other. This was the source of happiness. How do you try to you know, derive happiness? By having good food, right? Good cars, you know, like that or trying to get good feelings, you know, favorable feelings from the other. That was the source of happiness for you. After USB 2, this need, the purpose is continuous happiness and prosperity. Happiness is to be in a state of harmony. So now you are trying to work out how you can be in a state of harmony to ensure this continuity of happiness, right? Just this sensation and getting feeling from the other cannot be the source of continuity of happiness. The program initially was accumulation of physical facility and how much? Unlimited. This is what you thought, isn't it? Now you realize that the program for ensuring continuity of happiness is to understand and to live in harmony at all levels of being. The self, human, family, society, nature and existence. This shift from here to here and from here to here, it may not be a complete shift. It must be taking time and it will take time, isn't it? Many of you keep sharing, okay? That you were here and slowly you are moving here but many times you back to here, no? Isn't it? Yes, fluctuating here and there. But good thing is that at least you are not just here. No? You are not stuck here. You, know, you are trying to move from here to here. And how much you move from here to here will depend upon how much you have understood. Right? So that is the measure of your understanding. If you have understood the reality completely, then there will be a total move from here to here. So can you see this shift before USB 2 and after USB 2? Now after USB 3, there are some more shifts which will take place 
And what is that shift? If you see, <coughs> so this is what it is, you know, shift from before USB 2 and after USB 2. So USB 2 is focused on to initiate the process of self-exploration in you, the realization that human being is coexistence of self and body, which in turn leads to the following shift in perception. Right? Human being is equal to body, human being is coexistence of self and body. So all this we have already discussed, you know, in brief. So this is what is there before and after ESV2. With ESV2 following must have happened your qualification for ESV3. These four things must have happened in you and if these have happened then you are now qualified to work with ESV3, right? So you can check for yourself whether these qualifications are there. You have concluded that this content about the existential reality is relevant for you. It is your own need to understand it in depth. So you are not coming here just because, you know, the institute is organizing some course. But it is something which is a need for you, right? You want to understand the existential reality in more depth and therefore you are here. On the basis of the effort you have put in to understand this content and to live accordingly, you have concluded that you have to work on yourself first. Is that clear? You have to work on yourself first, not trying to set others right. No, first you have to work with yourself. You are responsible for your happiness and unhappiness. Have you realized this? Yes. The other or the situation are only a triggering point. Can you see this? How many of you can see this? Three, two points. You have to work on yourself first and you are responsible for your happiness and unhappiness. Good number. How many of you are not able to see? I think that is easier to count for me. Okay, good. You are able to see that you are the coexistence of self and body, while most of the effort you may have been making are for fulfilling the needs of the body. You expect or desire to further <coughs> understand the coexistence of the self with the body and live accordingly. So you might still be getting, you know, struggling with this need of the body. You know? But now you realize that yes, there is need to shift, okay, from just fulfilling the need of the body to fulfilling the need of the self as well as the need of the body. <coughs> Able to see all this, you are qualified to attend this ESV3, right? It has become a need for you. This is in a way rephrased, you know. You can read through this details for you to verify for yourself. I have nothing to explain, it's quite self-explanatory. You can read through and see for yourself whether this has taken place in you or not. I think these are the good points, you know. In the afternoon we can take up… Yes. Take up and ask for the reflections of the people. Yeah. In the reflections also and in the impact study also. Eh? In the impact study also. Yes. This is the impact. <laughs> this this is can the impact be the basis study. for your impact study. Four things. Ultimately, you have decided to understand things in depth yourself. You have questions for which you are committed to find answers. Right? So, we presume that you have come up with those questions, you know, to find answers. And the expected shift 
through USB 3, that is if you go through this whole workshop, what is, what is the expected shift? One is if we have undergone the shift 1 through USB 2 mentioned in the last lecture, we are ready to work for further shift through the process of self-exploration in USB 3. It has become our need to understand the existential reality in depth and to live accordingly. Otherwise, we need to keep working hard for ensuring shift 1 along with working for shift 2. It is needless to say that the task now is going to be far more difficult and challenging. However, if we are realized, if we have realized the acute need for it, we will be able to do it. So what we are saying is that the task that we have been doing through EHP2, now this task is much more challenging, you know. So much more difficult and challenging. But if I feel that it is important for me, you know, then I am willing to ch take that challenge. You know. So with that willingness, we are going further. We will now try to get an idea about the shift that is expected to take place if we go through the process of self-exploration in this course. So this is the shift. The focus of EHB3 is to help for the second shift to take place, that is to see that self is central to human existence, body is used as an instrument, which I just mentioned, right? So not only that, I am not just the body, but I am the coexistence of self and body. Now I should be able to see that it is the self which is central to human existence. And the body is used just as an instrument, as and when necessary. Very interesting. If you now start looking at yourself, you would see that you hardly use your body, you know. Not even one percent of your time. Like you are sitting here, right? Listening. How much time is spent in listening to the word which is pronounced by me? And how much time you are spending trying to reflect, explore, understand what is being said in the self. So I speak a few words, right? It's a matter of seconds or a few minutes. But you are reflecting over it for hours, right? Isn't it? And when you are reflecting over it, you are not using the body or you are using the body to reflect. When you are trying to explore something within, are you using your body to explore? No. You are doing it. Self is doing it, right? You used your body to get this information from me. I spoke some words or I have, there is something written here, you read it, right? While reading you made use of your body, but while exploring, are you making use of your body or you are doing it in your own self? Self. Yeah. See, in last two hours, you are speaking something for the first time, right? <laughs> and you have been exploring all through, isn't it? That is what is happening. 11 o'clock we started this session. Now it is 12.40. So one hour, 40 minutes. So 100 minutes okay, of exploration and few seconds of your expression, right? When you are using your body. That is what I am saying. Not even one percent. So the self is central to human existence, body is used as an instrument. And now if you look at the self, 
the need of human being is continuous happiness this continuous happiness is the need of the self or need of the body need of the self which is fulfilled by understanding the coexistence and feeling and thought of coexistence this understanding the coexistence where is it taking place in the self or in the body self so it is an activity of the self this feeling and thought of coexistence where is it taking place in the self or body self so this is also activity of the self so interestingly this need for continuous happiness and its fulfillment is related to the self and not the body this is expressed naturally in the form of mutually fulfilling behavior with human being mutually enriching work with rest of nature and participation in the larger order leading to undivided society and universal human order when you are doing this expression then you use your body isn't it this need is of the self this fulfillment is at the level of self but when you are expressing this with the world outside then you are using the body as and when necessary so who is playing the central role the self or the body self the issue the main issue is the need of the self and fulfillment of that need of the self by the activities of the self so this is one shift which has to take place same thing is being said here okay assuming human being equal to body understanding human being coexistence of self and body realizing that self is central to human existence and body is used as an instrument this shift has to take place this is the final cross chart human being is self is coexistence of self and body <coughs> this is after yashv2 expected after yashv3 is self is central to human existence body is used as an instrument existence is unit submerged in space same thing continues purpose is continuous happiness and prosperity happiness is to be in a state of harmony now this becomes continuous happiness <coughs> happiness is to be in a state of coexistence prosperity is a part of it which i have just explained you know in the first part that now you can see that prosperity is an integral part of continuity of happiness which is ensured by ensuring being in harmony or in a state of coexistence the program is to understand and to live in harmony at all levels of being the human being the family the society the nature and existence now you can see the to understand the program is to understand the coexistence to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and to live in coexistence so now it has become more you know condensed the same thing this as well as this this was focused on the units now it is focused in the units and the space the coexistence as a whole um <coughs> there is the purpose of the body how would you uh Hmm? what would be the purpose of the body the body is used as an instrument therefore ultimately the purpose of the body would be to ensure the fulfillment of the purpose of the self right and why it is used as an instrument it is used as an instrument to interact with the world outside 
instrument, so it does not have a purpose by itself. Its purpose is defined with respect to the self which is using it as an instrument. So that is the purpose of the body. What role it has to play? The role it has to play is in terms of connecting with the world outside, the other human being as well as the rest of the nature. Isn't it? So what she was saying that, you know, to express I need body. Okay. Like I am expressing my, you know, understanding with you, my feeling with you. In order to do that, I am using my body as an instrument. You are using your body, you know, as an instrument to listen to what I am saying. Right. Once you listen to that, then you are reflecting, you are exploring. That is happening at the level of self. Uh, actually, I could understand that the need of self, like, uh, and also I am using uh, my body as an instrument. Same way I am seeing uh, others also, they are using their body as an instrument to express what they are thinking in their own self. But uh, sometimes they are thinking something in their self, but reacting in other way. So through myself, uh, I can able to find what they are thinking in their mind. They are thinking in other way, but they are expressing by using their body in other way. So that way I am facing problem. Sometimes I could able to identify what they are thinking in their own self. For my own self, I could able to understand. Like others are not reacting, using their instrument in other way, proper way. I am in a situation so that I am also putting my instrument in a other way. So that is some problem arising. So how we can solve this type of understanding? See, generally the problem is not with the body. The problem is with the self only. Okay. Because body, unless body has some disability, but they body are reacting, may have some disability. I am seeing that they are not conveying what they are thinking in their mind, but they are using their instrument in other way. So the problem arises. They are not telling exactly what they are feeling in their own self. Yes, many situations, even uh, like... Yeah, yeah, but this acting, what do you think? This acting is being decided by the self or by the body? By the self. self. So the problem is with the self, right? I can understand that there is problem in the self and still I can have the right feeling for the other. And I can keep my behavior properly with the other. Then I will try to help the other to improve upon himself or herself. Right? If I have the right understanding. Bhaiya, what the ma'am is trying to represent here? Here, here. Yes. What ma'am is trying to represent here is probably she is talking about the physical gestures where the inner feeling is something negative, maybe, for example, negative towards the person in front of me, but physically I am behaving in a positive way. So the feelings are negative inside, but the physical response or body gestures are positive for the sake of manifestation, for the sake of expression. So how this kind of situation can be resolved? Probably this is the question she has imposed. Yeah, I mean, I responded uh, with that background only. I am saying, if this is being done, the problem is at the level of self or problem is at the level of body. Absolutely, self. self. Yeah. So you have some feeling, some thought, and then parallelly you also have another set of feeling, another set of thought. Right? Deep down you think that the first feeling and the thought was good, but you can't express it, it will create trouble, right? 
So you are using the second set of feeling and thought and you are expressing it through your body. The problem is not with the body. Okay. Problem can be with the body if the body has some disability. Right? Some part of your body is not working, some part of your brain is not working. Then there can be problem with the body. But the case that you are talking about, this is a problem with the self only. Right? Now, if I understand this, right, and if I have the right understanding in myself and right feeling in myself, I will not get affected by this kind of behavior. Right? So I will be in a state of harmony within, I will have the right feeling for the other, and I will behave with the other in a proper manner. Despite the fact that he is not behaving properly, he or she is not behaving properly, right? Then what will happen? He will accept my behavior, but he may respond to it or he may not respond to it. He may even react to it. Right? All those possibilities are there. But as far as I am concerned, what will I do? I will have the right feeling, be happy and behave properly. <coughs> Isn't it? It will take some time, but slowly his re reaction or response will also start changing. Right? But even if it does not change, for my happiness I have to do this. Right? Maya, I have a question. The self is central to human existence. So, uh, is it like we mean to say here is we have a self, all of us are having a self which is innate and similar. Is that the appropriate meaning for this sentence, Bhaiya? We will explore. The second part we will explore okay. whether this self is same in all of us, whether the innate nature of this self is same in all of us, all this we will explore. What we are saying now is that if I have to take care of my, you know, as myself as a human being, where do I focus? I focus on the self or I focus on the body. That's the first thing that we are saying. Because till now what is happening? Most of the time we are focused with the body only. Body, the need of the body, the physical facility, all that, right? We have not cared for the self. In ESP 2 we said we have to care for the body and we have to care for the self. Now we are saying that the main thing is to care for the self. If I take care of the self, I will also take care of the body, you know, as a byproduct. That is what is being said. But what is the nature of the self, whether it is same for all of us, whether the innate, there is some innateness in the self which can be understood and ensured in all of us. All those questions we will answer. Uh, but we'll the meaning into. for this sentence is like, how can I have a clarity on this particular statement is my question. Yeah, so this is what I am saying that the meaning of this sentence self is central to human existence is that the main role is played by the self and not by the body. Okay, my the decisive role is taken by the self. All this we have already discussed. And there is another shift which has to take place. And that is about the existence. So if you look at the existence, coexistence is central to existence. And therefore understanding of coexistence, harmony and relationship the feeling and thought of coexistence, harmony and relationship in the self is central to continuous happiness in the self. So two things. One is self is central to human existence. Second, coexistence is central to the existence. Therefore, the knee, this continuous happiness is ensured by way of understanding this coexistence and the feeling and thought of coexistence. And Ultimately, living in coexistence.
This is what is, you know, essential thing to do for me as a human being, you know, as a human conduct. La last sentence, sir. Last living in relationship harmony coexistence. Living in coexistence, ah. harmony and relationship. As as human being, self is central, central for human conduct in the human being. So, what is the central to human conduct? Living in coexistence, harmony, and relationship. Number one, self is central to human existence. Number two. Coexistence is central to existence and as a consequence of this, living in coexistence is central to human conduct. That is what is being said. What is the core of human conduct? Living in coexistence. Coexistence, harmony and relationship. That is the core of human conduct. Sir, uh, what yeah. I was asking is, is it an error as human being is central for human contact or as self is central for human contact? Hmm. Living in coexistence, harmony, relationship as human being, one part, is central for human conduct in human being. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. We have five. This is interesting thing, you know, shift one and two. Explore into the question, what is the center of our living? This, you remember, you know, we have to keep asking this question to ourselves all through. Okay. Where are you focused? Physical facility and body? Or you have gone up, now sensation and feeling from the other has become an issue. You have still gone up, feeling from within it has become an issue for you. Still up, you know, started paying attention to this self, but you are fo largely focused on your imagination, the feeling, thought and expectation, or preconditioning and assumptions, the sanskar, or still you have gone up and you are there at the level of pure observer, the natural acceptance. And then you have still gone up and you are able to focus at the level of coexistence, at the level of space. Just remember, we will look into this in detail, you know, in next session. Possibilities, these are the places where, which can be the center of your being. I'll discuss about them in detail. Okay. So from my side, I will stop here. If there are any questions left, we have two, three minutes left, I can respond to the question. Yes. Sir, I will try to frame. On. Now? Okay. Uh, sir, in continuation to the question, that purpose of body is to help the self understand. Uh, many a times I am getting confused. Uh, till what extent to use body? Uh, sometimes if I get involved in a work which is helping me to understand, I forget about it. <coughs> and forget then about the body. Body. Yes. And then later, I completely withdraw myself from that work uh, because now I am into focus of the body. Uh, now question is, in the coexistence, what is expected from the self? Uh, ki, uh, unne us purpose ko Pura karne ke liye body ko chhodna bhi pada, to thik hai kya? See, the uh, <coughs> self is using the body for the purpose of understanding, 
for the purpose of expressing the feeling, right? But the self also has the sense of responsibility towards the body. So it is the self who has to make, you know, man make this balance. So on the one hand, I am using the body to fulfill my purpose of under right understanding, right feeling and right thought. On the other hand, as a part of that right feeling and right thought, I have the feeling of responsibility towards the body also. So I am taking care of the body. So that balance I have to work out. Yeah. And see, what is happening is that if we have the right kind of education and sanskar system, this will go in a very natural manner. Today what has happened is that we have grown up, spent 30 years, 40 years of our life, 50 years of our life without having right understanding and right feeling. And now suddenly we have a proposal and we feel that time is lost, you know. What to do? Rush, you know. And so don't rush, you know. Do whatever can be done in a balanced manner now for yourself. And there is enough opportunity to do even now. Then help the next generation. Okay? To get it at an earlier age. So when a teacher is trying to get this, for him there is a hurry because, you know, he or she has lost a lot of time. But when he, they are giving it to the student at the age of 18, 19, right? They have enough time, 80 years of their life. So they will not have this problem. Huh? Yes. So, so sir, um, we are used to see the material world and we think that existence is material. But after UHV2, we understood that I am coexist with body. But when I see physically, I believe, but I don't see self. So by activities of self, I understand that I am there. But when I am not aware, uh, then I see again I am material. So this uh, fluctuation is. Yeah, <laughs> this is, uh, when you say you cannot see, what is the meaning of seeing? What is the meaning of seeing things? Seeing is by understanding. <coughs> <coughs> Let me ask this question. How do you know that the body is there? By sensations. By observing the shape of the body, right? Okay. Now, close your eyes. Are you still able to see that the body is there? Yes. Yes. How? Feel the sensations. You feel some sensation, right? Okay. Who is seeing this sensation? Myself. Self. Right? And this sensation is what? Is an activity in the body, seen by the self. So ultimately when you are seeing something, what you are seeing is the activity. Whether in the body or in the self. Isn't it? Now if you are seeing the activity, you can directly see the activity of the body, activity of the self both. This is our assumption that seeing something means seeing the shape. That is not the right assumption. Seeing something means seeing the activity of it. That is how I can see the body when my eyes are closed. I have a question. Yes, clarification. But yes, already said, ask question. <laughs> But <laughs> with the permission of my co-explorers, or we stop it after that uh, last. Question. Okay. Yeah. Please go ahead. Just yeah. close that. 
it is said that we are responsible for our happiness or unhappiness. We hold it. You know? But my co-explorer said he missed the train because of traffic jam. He felt very unhappy. How will he hold the responsibility of his happiness? See, this is what I have answered to it, but I can answer again. The train is likely to be missed. Why do I depend my happiness or unhappiness in getting the train or missing the train? Okay. That is the problem. So I will start in time, but it is still possible for me to miss the train because there are n number of, you know, circumstances which can lead to that condition. Yeah, so why should I depend my happiness or unhappiness in catching the train or not catching the train? Something which is transitory in nature cannot be a source of continuous happiness. That was the answer I gave at that time. But I can explain it, you know, in more detail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, for example, I want to meet all of you. Okay? express my feeling of relationship for all of you. But I meet some of you and some of you I am not able to meet, which is fine. Many of you, are, we have been meeting over Zoom, right? We recognize each other's voice. Okay? But we did not meet physically. Okay? This time there is an occasion where I can meet you physically. You know, good. You know, I will use it, this as an opportunity, you know and share whatever I have to share, you know, in a physical mode. Otherwise, online also we were sharing so many things. But while coming, I would have missed, you know, the many reason I would not have been able to come. Yeah. But that cannot be source of my unhappiness. Yeah. If there is any question from what we have discussed in the morning, first half. Yes. Self, the self, the consciousness unit, whether it is singular by or it is plural. Self, there is only one self or there are many selves. Because when I listen to other lectures, I heard that there is only one consciousness. <laughs> so your uh, question is that whether consciousness unit 1 and consciousness unit 2, they are two different units or they are one unit? Is that the question? A basic question is whether it is singular or plural, <laughs> consciousness <laughs> unit, that itself by a <laughs> no, what, this is what I am asking, that unit 1 and unit 2 are same or they are similar or there is something which is similar and something which is different. What is the question? Same thing, whether it is one consciousness <laughs> unit which is reflecting in other units, the same consciousness unit or multiple consciousness units are there. But the same one, but it is existing in plural, multiple forms. Yeah. So human being one is coexistence of 
self I1 and body V1, right? And H2, I can write human being, that will make it clear. Huh? Now the question is, is I1 equal to I2 is equal to I or I1 is similar to I2 or some activity So I have broken your question into these three, right? I, myself, yourself are different, right? Because I think differently and you think differently, isn't it? If I1 was same as I2, then my thinking and my, your thinking must be the same. My feeling, your feeling must be the same, right? Which is not always true. So this is not true. It is possible that at some point of time, under certain conditions, I1 may be equal to I2. I may think similar to you. Right? I may feel similar to you, but most of the time it is not, not so. Or most of the time Second is, is I1 similar to you? What is the answer? In some way they are similar. Some way they are not similar, right? So, yes, the potential is same, right? And what else? Purpose is same. Huh? And program is ultimately same, right? But put. Competence is not same, right? So this is same, this is same, this is same. This is not same. So that is the answer. Okay. <laughs> eh? Yes. The third thing, that there are some activities of I1 which is same as or similar to the some activities of I2. This if you see, 
एट द लेवल ऑफ प्योर ऑब्जर्वर at the level of natural acceptance we are all similar which is some particular activity of the self right yeah that is the answer i will deal with this other part you know sometime when it is said that the consciousness is same what does it mean okay that we will discuss later but when you are talking about the self the self are different in general some activity of the self may be similar to the other activities of the self right which is in terms of pure observer in terms of natural acceptance this all we can verify right and in terms of potential which is essentially referring to pure observer you know and the natural acceptance the potential is same the purpose is same program is same but their competence is different which essentially means that if you look at the level of the highest activity of realization you know they are similar at the level of sanskar and the level of all these preconditionings imagination we are different so at this level we are different at this level we are similar and this self is combination of all these you know the pure observer the sanskar the imagination right yes yes is the same potential is same program is same in such a case uh, with right understanding our consciousness also should be same and it should be uh, same for all the self and this competence should not come into picture with all like everybody should be treated uh, in the same level but competence arises uh, which creates lot of differences yeah so we should understand what is similar what is different the similarity is also there the difference is also there okay oh. we can observe that similarity we can observe that difference and we should know how to handle this difference right when we talk about this realization understanding and contemplation we will find that those three things can be similar for all of us the realization of coexistence can be similar understanding of the harmony will be similar contemplation of relationship will also be similar those three things can become similar right in that case our desires that identification of the purpose will also become similar and then our potential will also become similar um, our our competence will also become similar in that sense so all of us will be able to fulfill our need to live with continuous happiness so that is there potentially but that potential has not been realized and we have to realize that potential and ultimately that is the purpose of education in sanskar ultimately the purpose of education and sanskar is to help every child to realize this potential which is already there within him which he has not realized and if you look at the education system today are we giving education for this purpose
What do you think? Why I am audible? Uh, the, even no present, the, even present? that minimum relationship is not there. And that relationship is there till we give the assignment marks. Once assignment mark is completed, finish relationship over. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the, what is happening is the feeling in relationship is not there. It is simple transaction. Transaction without relationship. So, this has to be realized. This potential, this purpose, this program has to be realized and that is the meaning of developing the competence. And the purpose of education is to equip the child with that competence, you know, to realize his potential. So there is a famous saying that this right education is one which frees you, you know, from all bondage, you know, isn't it? Helps you to know yourself, know your potential, know your purpose, know your program and realize it. So now you have to add such things from outside, you know, as one of the value education course. Where is this has to be the basis of education, isn't it? Everything else will be built on this, rather than this being an additional course, this has to be there at the basis, isn't it? So today education system is book based and mark based only student study. That already I have mentioned so many times in the online program also. Cycle, the wheel is there, handbell is there. If you give the idea of the paperwork, then student practice, then only on time fell down in the ground and the practice only we can get the clear cut driving force. But today education system, book based, only mark based, we are getting a degree and everything. Now UHV comes, student are really understand. SNH is generally student, we are the base for the engineering college students. First we motivate the student, why you come here and what is the purpose of studying engineering or some other degrees. We give the some ideas about that one. After the UHE, students are motivated somewhere. But practical knowledge in the current system also, in my opinion, to be improved. See, the ultimate issue is that what I am giving as an education, does it relate to my life directly? That is the issue, right? If it relates to my life, it is practical. If it does not relate to my life and if it is only a tool to earn money, right, then there is problem. But see, I mean, we, we as teachers have to feel responsible that at one point of time, this education system was designed not to free people from their slavery, but to make them slaves. Okay. This was done with a very concrete decision, isn't it? Around 150 years back. <coughs> the unfortunate thing is that we are still continuing with it. So we as teachers have to take responsibility and do something about it. We keep complaining, you know, Macaulay did this and, you know, he made us slaves and all that. Okay, fine, you know, 75 years we have become independent. Macaulay has gone, right? The whole British government has gone. What are we doing in education? Eh? 
Yeah, medium is one thing. The whole content. What is the content? This whole education system is not talking about me, about you, about ourselves, right? Our purpose, our program. It is only talking about how to become an employee. How to get a job, how to get a good salary, good facility, right? Yeah, that is the content of education. Isn't it? So, but we should not feel that we are helpless. If we have something meaningful to talk, students are there to pay attention to it. Yes. And I would say USB is one example where when you start working on it yourself and you start sharing with the students, they certainly respond. Initially, they may have some notions about it, you know. but if you start working on yourself and it starts reflecting in your behavior, they start responding and it can make a difference. And that much of freedom is there even now with all the problems, you know, there is enough scope for the teacher, you know, to provide right kind of education. Not very difficult. Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> we were talking about the shifts that we have to go through, okay, in our very being, you know. So, if you look at the uh, Where we are, most of us, or the introductory workshop, most of us are focused in the level of physical facility or at the level of body. Can you see that? So, studying in IIT means getting a good job. Getting a good job means getting a good salary, right? Which means good physical facility. Or is it anything more? So whether doing engineering or medical or anything, you know, it only means getting a good job, good physical facility, right? And with good physical facility, what do you do? You can keep your body healthy. Even you don't do that, right? Yes. One shift is that from there, you are paying attention to the sensation. Sensation means some activity taking place in the body and it is read by the self. So it is subtler than the body, right? It involves both the body and the self, isn't it? So you eat ice cream, there is some sensation. Right? You happen to like that sensation. Okay? Or some sweet or something, right? Listening to some song, some music, right? All this is sensation. It is subtler than the body because it involves the body, some activity in the body and reading of that by the self. Then, trying to get some feeling from the other. Feeling is certainly more subtle than the sensation because the feeling is where? At the level of body or at the level of self? Self. So, it is the activity of the self. <laughs> now, if you look at your program for getting happiness, this is the major program, right? Your program for getting happiness is trying to getting trying to get happiness from favorable sensation. Right? Or from 
favorable feelings from others. And in order to do this, you are investing this, the body and the physical facility. What do you do with physical facility? Huh? Today, with the physical facility, you good, good, cook good food, tasty food and eat, right? Get right kind of sensation. You have a good room with air condition. And what is giving, what the air condition is giving to you? Some favorable sensation, right? Instead of heat, you are feeling cold. Huh? What more? Yes, by uh, here. All your technology, science, everything, at the most what it is doing? Maya, just one <coughs> yeah. clarification. There is sensation every time we are telling. Listening to music, it is just for relaxation. It is not of continuously we won't be able to hear for 24 by 7 all lifetime. It is just to relax and IPL matches if we watch, just for relaxation. It is not wrong on our self. Just to get relaxed for some time, we listen to music, whatever the songs we like, we can hear and we can go and watch out a movie, just, it is meant a sensation. Okay, let it be for uh, just three years. Is it wrong? Yes, that you, is what. You eat food yeah. and you eat tasty food, there is no problem. But if you think that by eating tasty food, you can derive continuity of happiness and therefore you go on eating that and, is what, and yeah. spoil your stomach, that is the problem. Right? Yeah, that is what. Limitations <laughs> are there within myself. I know the limitations and uh, because when we, uh, my own colleagues from here, all the UHV team, whenever I tell Shah Rukh Khan movies or any songs, if I keep it in WhatsApp status, they will tell it is all sensation, sensation and other things and they will make fun of me. So just for uh, to get it on the spirit, I used to have it for just few minutes. So that is what, whatever it is. I know the limitations and the conditions that it is not a continuous happiness. Just to make it get relaxed for some time, we used to go ahead with the things. Yeah, so we will talk about how these sensations can be rightly used. Like when I am saying something, right, and you are listening to it, it is a sensation, isn't it? Only thing is that we are trying to make right use of it. So through this sensation, you are able to listen to what I am placing as a proposal and now you are verifying those proposals in yourself. So sensation are anyway being used. So there is no opposition to the sensation. But we have to understand that these sensations cannot be the source of continuity of happiness that clarity has to be there. Similarly, if I want to get continuity of happiness from the favorable feeling from the other, then also I am in trouble. Right? Because this cannot be continuous. Number one, it is creating dependency on the other. Number two, this getting something from outside itself does not have the continuity. So this does not work. This 6 and 5 does not work for continuity of happiness. 4 and 3b also does not work. Morning I was saying, you know, what is nitya and what is anitya? What has continuity in time, what does not have continuity of time, that I have to differentiate. And only that which is which has continuity in time can be source of continuous happiness and not otherwise. 
I was just checking what is this feeling from others and feelings from within because both of the feelings happening within me only. The feelings are within me and why I'm expecting this feeling from others and within me. What is the difference between a 3 and 3B? 3A means if I have the right understanding, I will have the feeling of relationship for everyone. And this I can have in continuity. And this does not depend on the other. This is feeling from within. Second is, I am trying to get the right feelings from the other. Feeling of respect, feeling of trust. That cannot have the continuity. So the 3A is meant to be I understanding part and 3B is from feeling from others. Yeah, so 3A has a possibility of continuity if it is based on my right understanding. Right understanding. I, that cannot be source of continuous happiness. If I am working with 4 or 3B, that can also not be a source of continuous happiness. 3A can be a source of continuous happiness if it is based on the understanding, no right understanding. Then at the level of self, in fact if you look at the shift from EHB 2 to EHB 3, is basically we are saying that this cannot be the source, this can also not be the source, this can possibly be the source. Ultimately the source is at the level of self. The source of continuous happiness is at the level of self and this need is also at the level of self. This need of continuous happiness is not the need of the body, it is the need of the self. So, am I looking at myself at the level of self? What do you think? When you are looking at yourself, are you looking at the level of self or still looking at the level of body and physical facility? Self. Good. So, this much we have settled. <coughs> then we will see that even at the level of self there are different possibilities. Okay? One is at the level of imagination. Now you know what imagination is? Yeah. This desire, thought, expectation that you have, right? And these desire, thought and expectations are decided on the basis of your preconditioning, right? your assumptions, what we were discussing in the morning, depending on your sanskar, right? So if you are operating at this level of the self, still you are in trouble. Because different people have different imaginations, different feelings, right? You may have a right feeling or a wrong feeling, right? And if you have a wrong feeling, you are in a state of disharmony, contradiction and unhappiness. Similarly, if you have a wrong sanskar, it will give rise to a wrong feeling and you are in trouble again. So, ultimately, you have to be at the level of pure observer, at the level of your natural acceptance, at the level of right understanding. So, that is where Ultimately, we can find a solace. <coughs> so, number one question is whether you are at the level of self or at the level of body. Then within the self, you are at the level of imagination, at the level of sanskar or at the level of pure observer, where you are. What is the center of your being? Ultimately, you have to operate at all these levels. Huh? You have to operate at the level of body also. You have to operate at the level of physical facility also, right? 
but which is the center of your being? <coughs> yes, Deep, Deepika ji. Yes, Pia. 3A, what is the other uh, source of 3A? You said one is right understanding. Other is the preconditioning. Your sanskar. So I can feel from within, uh, the feeling of relationship is will be there without the right understanding? Yeah, it may be out of the assumption. Like in our whole tradition, it is said that love everybody like yourself. Right? Or we are all the children of God. Therefore, love everyone. It is a good, you know, thing. And it will, if you believe it, it will give rise to a feeling of relationship. Right? But will it have continuity? It may or may not have continuity. If you have not understood that we are similar, okay, at the level of self, at the level of our natural acceptance, we are all similar, right? And we have a natural acceptance for relationship. When I have this feeling of relationship, I am in a state of harmony and happiness. Unless you understand all this, your feeling of relationship is not continuous in nature. It is not definite. <coughs> See, and a good tradition or good sanskar, even if it is by way of assumption, is very helpful. Why it is helpful? Because as long as you work with that assumption, it will give rise to right feelings and it will be helpful. But if you have not, if it has, it has not led to understanding, <coughs> then at the time of crisis, you may change your decision. So what we are saying is that if there are right kind of beliefs, very good to begin with, but then work on them and make it as your understanding rather than just remaining as a belief. And that is why all the time we are saying, don't take it as a given, you know, truth. What we are saying is, take it as a proposal and verify it on your own right. Unless you see it for yourself, that it is right for you, right? It will not have the continuity. Yeah, yeah one, one more question, Bia. What is the difference between feeling in 2C and 3A? Feeling? What is the difference between feelings in 2C and 3A? Yeah. <coughs> this feeling and this feeling is the same, right? Yeah, just wanted to know this. Is it same or is it different? Yeah. The same. Maya, can I ask? Maya, I have two questions here. One is when we say that the sources for 3A is going to be right understanding or it can also be preconditioning or assumption. Then why is that we have differentiated preconditioning assumptions on the top and you have these feelings from within on the bottom. Both can be given in the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was only trying to differentiate between your center of being. If you are centered at the level of feeling, okay. then this is 3A and 3B. If you are centered at the level of self, then it has three possibility. And one of them is this feeling, thought and uh, you know, expectation. Okay, Maya. The other thing is, 2C, which is my imagination, is also... Uh, it can be based on the source for my imagination can be based on preconditioning assumptions or the sanskar and, and why is that differentiation over here 2b and 2c this 2b is the seed 
and this is the tree growing out of the seed okay the seed is there as your preconditioning as your sanskar and whenever it gets a favorable condition it grows into a plant and a tree so your imagination is like the seed of sanskar growing into a plant right <coughs> for example if you feel that you have to compete with the other okay if that feeling is there there is struggle for survival survival of the fittest if that assumption is there any time it can take the shape of opposition feeling of opposition and with that feeling of opposition you can start thinking so many things you know and planning what to do okay. so all that is coming out of your basic assumption there is struggle for survival so if you have to really reset things right you have to tackle this preconditionings right these assumptions which you have made in yourself bhaiya you have seen that banyan tree yes sir how big it is okay you have seen the seed of banyan tree small how small. small what is the ratio ratio maybe 1 is to 10000 or 1 lakh yeah 1 is to 1 10000 or 1 is to 1 lakh right <coughs> <coughs> if you want to handle your sanskar it's like handling that small seed but if you don't handle that small seed and it becomes a big tree you can understand how difficult it will be to handle it bhaiya yeah uh, you that feeling is same as desire the feeling thought and expectation and that <coughs> feeling is same as desire yeah and uh, second question is how do i find where am i in this where how do i find where am i in this because sometime we are in the feeling and sometime we are in this imagination and condition so it's again in the fluctuation so how do i see yeah what i am doing now is posing this question you know okay okay wait. for all of you you know you have to trace where you are but then <laughs> all through this eight days i'll try to help you know you to locate where you are mm-hmm. yeah that is the purpose and this feeling and desire is same bhaiya yeah so this feeling and desire are same in fact that the feeling that i have towards the other unit that is what becomes my desire in relation to that unit for example if i have feeling of relationship with the other my desire becomes to live with that feeling right of relationship if i have the feeling of opposition then my desire becomes to live with that feeling of opposition with that person so if you really want to identify the desire it will be in terms of the feeling yes i can be centered at the level of imagination i can be centered at the level of preconditioning the sanskar i can also be centered at the level of pure observer so when even when i am focusing at the level of self and i am at the level of imagination i am still in trouble if i am at the level of sanskar i might still be in trouble only when i am at the level of pure observer i can come out of the trouble right that is where i can be safe and there is still one more step to go right this pure observer is there with the realization of this coexistence with the realization of this space that is at another level that we have to talk about because that realization of coexistence is something which is essential for me to understand the coexistence to have the feeling of coexistence and to live with that feeling of coexistence you know 
in my behavior, in my work, in my participation. Working with the level S1 and S2 up to this, I am trying to derive happiness from outside. And this cannot be the source of continuous happiness. When I start working above this S2, that is 3A, 2C, 2B, 2A and then 1, there is a possibility of continuity of happiness. And there I can see happiness is my innate nature. Happiness is from within. And then only I become fully responsible towards myself. Yes. This is the gross most level at which we are living, you know. As you go up, this is increasing in the subtleness. Physical facility is the gross level, gross most level of your being. Subtle than that, physical facility is the body, subtle than that is the sensation. Still subtler is the feeling, right? And you are going up. Finally, up to the level of space, which is no activity. Yes. Um, Ages from sixth to first one. Wow, like in many cases, I can't relate to the feeling of divinity where I could find the difference in me, around me. Where, like throughout the UHV I used to check, I could not find any word like divinity. So in this slide where I can uh, connect the divinity with this part, 2B, 2C and all, like God things <coughs> like that, that feel. Yeah, that's what I was saying in the morning, that now you you know, through this process of self-exploration, you will be able to see that possibility of divinity in you, you know. And as you explore and realize these things, you will feel divine, you know. So all those things that is being talked about in the tradition, now they will not just remain as some beliefs, you know. They will become some real things for you. The moment you have a feeling of relationship, number one, it makes you ha in harmony and happiness. That is one thing. But you can see that it immediately expands you, right? It expands you from yourself to the other to whom you are feeling related, right? Divinity is basically that expansion, right? What you said rightly that I am expanding, you know. <coughs> to begin with, I was an individual. Now, slowly I am realizing that I am not just an individual, right? I am an integral part of this whole existence, right? Which is in the form of coexistence. When I realize that the existence is in the form of coexistence and I am an integral part of it, that means that I have now realized that I am an indivisible and integral part of the whole existence. Right? That is the divinity. Isn't it? That is the divinity. But this is something which I have to realize myself. You know? And when I have that realization, I have the feeling of relationship for everyone. That is what is called love. You know? That is the meaning of prem. Right? Love for everyone. When I have feeling of love for everyone, then I develop that compassion for everyone. Right? So, number one is understanding this coexistence, which is the truth. On the basis of understanding the coexistence, I feel related to everyone. That is love, that is frame. And on the basis of that feeling of relatedness to everyone, 
I have compassion, karuna, right? So when you say satya, prem and karuna, then this divinity is not something, you know, which is something to be believed, but it is something to be realized and practiced. And when you realize this, then you understand that every religion is talking about this only. Right? Every great person, every saint has essentially been talking about this. In regard of whether he is from left or right or east or west. Right? Sir, I have something to say with my feelings, not question. Yeah, please. Sir, actually, uh, in this years of my teaching experience, one thing I found, sir, self is realization. And after attending UHV, frank to say, I did not attend UHV. Supraja ma'am was keep on sending mails. <laughs> yeah, keep on sending mails. I ask, who is this Supraja? Out of her, out of her. First love. question. <laughs> Out of her oh, my mailbox you. is getting full because of Supraja mail. Who is the Supraja? First thing that only I asked. After that, the first initiative was she used to come to all department. The first department is our department. All initial activity will be started by Department of Physics and Nanotechnology. Okay. But no relaxation in the department. Okay. 24 hour job. So, uh, first uh, thing she came and talked about UHV. I actually came half an hour late and attended her talk. But it was quite interesting. I just gave one word. Initially, previously, whenever people talk, whenever people say any joke, everyone give applause and appreciate. That appreciation and smile, when people see each other, we smile each other. That was the first thing I was telling to Madam after a talk. You smile beautifully. That is the first thing I told her. Yeah, that smile is gone for me actually. Okay, people say you smile, but I never smile. No, I'm starring for seven years. Okay, smile is gone totally, I'm telling. That could be because of other uh, environmental, family, work pressure, all things. So, when I just said clap the hands, my HOD made me UHV coordinator of the department. Okay. <laughs> I never attended UHV. I don't know anything about UHV. I asked what is UHV? <laughs> no human values, then where is the human values coming from? I asked this question. Then after keep on slowly, I had a friendship with her, talked with her. My HOD made me UHV. I don't know what to do, you please help me. She told all the things, other things. And she was again keep on sending us mails and messages that this will be useful to attend like that. So first thing when I requested madam is, uh, 8 hour daily class, 4 hour class, 5 hour class. Now if I want to attend online UH, we came last year, 22. If I want to, first I attended on uh, December, I first registered. I could not attend because my mother was seriously ill and I was in hospital with her, I could not attend, frank to say. Then second time, when, I, when I'm about to re-attend, I told her, you please relax ourselves. So first thing which I want to uh, appreciate her is her efforts. I just requested her, that's all. She took it very seriously and took uh, talked to Dean everyone. And uh, she said, you can prepone or postpone your classes and attend UHV. So with that uh, reward which, gave, which she gave us, I sent a mail boldly to my HOD putting CC, including UHV cell. I will not take any classes for one week. I want to sit for online class and I will attend. Then he said, Supraja madam said, okay, you proceed. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so in that attitude, uh, UHV one I completed. That is three months after HOD appointed me, UHV coordinator, three, four months. <laughs> then uh, next UHV two came. I used to motivate everyone in the department. Nobody used to hear. Then I sent an audio recording. So when I sent an audio recording in the WhatsApp, so many were uh, uh, very eager to listen rather than read the messages. Some message come like that only I neglected her message, no. Every time she is sending mail, she is torturing us. Like that they also neglected my message, cut copy, control, all delete. So after I gave an audio recording, they were really interested in 20 to 25 faculty right now. Uh, they have done UHV1 and uh, 10 to 12. But uh, she used to tell us, don't force. 
let them bring from inside and let them give uh, what to say is interest for attending the uhv now uhv 3 came so that time madam used to tell from the beginning to us in the group but uh, i never because department they will not leave i don't know what to do now again i mail to hod eight day i am not available I finish all my portion Friday. Everything done. Rest your mark entry. I will take care. Eight day I will not be available. So I am not responding to any of the messages for the eight days because when I take the phone, you know, you are given an order from A C T. Don't use phone. So this hall has that respect. I need to give the respect. I am not using phone inside the hall. Deep air share morning toll. You can use during break. So afternoon only because I told my mother and uh, husband I will not call you. Don't worry. If I am not coming also, you don't worry. They got afraid. <laughs> So they want to know my status. So I just tell the status I'm here. I ate food. Then they keep the food. They are happy. But these are jokes. What I want to convey here is, when we are uh, uh, thinking deeply from the self, we will say that we want to change from self. But two organs I used to tell the students. Two organs are ha mainly controlling our self. The most powerful organ in our body is eye and the ear. For eye. you give a word it's god it's a c c it's really a c when you get anything plugged into the eye when you get any harm in the eye immediately it will shed tear to tell you that something has happened some problem is there and when i see you know my eye is not telling anything that uh, uh, sir is bad or sir is good like that but my ear time is 5 o'clock when it will be over 5:30 i need to catch and go this will send a signal in a disharmony so what the ear does is the maximum <coughs> concentration capacity of a human being is 20 to 25 minutes so after 25 minutes the mind starts to wander automatically that is human nature for all human so the ear will send a an harmony signal to the brain so the brain will control all the organ if you take my class after 15 minutes my students say what she is teaching she is irritating us but after i enter the class i will say today class is 20 minutes total period is 15 minutes after that 10 minutes attendance okay half an hour next to 20 minutes you do the assignments okay i will not disturb you you don't disturb me but 20 minutes 20 minutes you should not distract you should never distract because your brain capacity of listening is 20 minutes you want me to read the ppt or you want me to tell the matter like you are explaining to us and making us understand i will ask them so with this it is able to see some transformation in them so that is the first thing which i learnt and next thing is this ear is actually controlling the entire organ if the eye is made to control the ear then as madam was asking the question we will achieve the divinity definitely we will become divine because eye is 100% like see but ear has a name called saguni saguni i will say here to that sir chandan sir because sir morning told me uh, told us all 80 uh, people name you should remember tomorrow it took one year for me to remember 26 of my pg students but within one day <laughs> how <laughs> i was fearing to chandan sir how are you able to how many numbers you collected because i want to see the face and suppose suddenly sir ask who is chandan <laughs> i cannot say he is chandan his name is satish he is chandan i should pinpoint correctly till now 15 to i think 20 number only i remember even that also count i don't that immediately shocked me how it is possible within one day for me to remember 80 names when i took one year to remember 26 see now my ear is controlling not i if my eye control na uh, i will say by observing by talking you can like that it will control since my ear is controlling it is creating how it is possible that fear everything it's creating inside so you used to keep on telling from morning and observing observer observer actually that is a powerful word in physics we have in quantum mechanics observable that observable will control a wave function so when it is able to control a wave function we will get something deep into our soul but when i get that deep into the soul definitely i'll become god or godly thanks i also fight only then husband gave me food fight over that's all <laughs> then tomorrow new fight <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
we are not very in a hurry to evaluate okay we are giving enough opportunity to express okay then each one of us can evaluate ourselves <coughs> so my purpose of placing this is essentially to provide some kind of yardstick for you you know to keep asking yourself you know what supraja ji was asking you know how do i know where i am you know first we have to have, have an yardstick right so i am providing that yardstick now you will start asking this question to yourself you know to where i am and as we go ahead we'll keep responding to this question you know this you know all this possibility that each one of us has within ourselves i have just written down those possibilities <coughs> i have drawn your attention towards it and now you will start asking this question to yourself what is the center of my being where am i focused ultimately i have to work at all these levels right i have to work at the level of physical facility i have to work at the level of body i have to work at the level of relationship i have to work at the level of sensation right i have to work at the level of my own self right my imagination my sanskar ultimately my pure observer and ultimately i have to have the realization of this coexistence this is space right that whole range is there for me to be but the question is what is the center of my being where am i centered that question you have to keep asking right so some points for your self reflection since ehb2 what effort are you making for self exploration on a regular basis what is the outcome of it share three specific achievements write down any 10 key takeaways from ehb2 this is about ehb2 right you are take away from the ehb2 this will be helpful for you to work further you know here in ehb3 